Today I am at Exmoor Zoo. It's just gone one o'clock in the afternoon. It is Friday the 13th of March, so it's pretty quiet because obviously all the kids are at school, which is why I came today instead of like, tomorrow. I imagine it'd be a lot busier. So the only thing I know about this place is what it says on its website. So um, I'm gonna go in and see what it's all about. So here are some monkeys. Right, let's see what's in place. I've just had a burger. Um, I have, didn't really come here to uh, review the restaurant, but that was not the best burger I've ever had. Just gonna put it out there, I've had better. Right, so um, I'm trying to be exciting, but I've done many of these like zoos and animal parks on my channel. And, they're all pretty similar, like for example here is a tawny owl enclosure. I mean tawny owls like to fly. I actually have them near where I live, I hear them every night, but I've never seen them. And here is a pond with ducks. Yeah. I know, there's one. That's quite good. Follow the bear, lost child trail. So if you're a lost child, you just follow the bear. That takes you back up to the, uh, where you pay, like the cafe and the shop. All right, so where am I? Right, so I passed the meerkats. So I must be around here somewhere. Oh no, I just passed that, didn't I? So, down here. Oh look, they're numbered. That's handy. Five, I'm at five. I'm here. Exciting. It's a lima. This parrot was being really noisy a second ago, just so I came over here. And now, it shut up. More parrots. Okay. Oh, you can hear the parrot now. Basically, what I'm really looking at is just a lot of Enclosures. I haven't really seen too many animals. There's this enclosure. Lots of pictures of, of things. So yeah, that's that's good. It's a kookaburra you can hear. A wonga pigeon. Okay, I was actually given a map when I came in. So this is number 22. Oh. So what is that number 22? Here's my little thing. Number 22 is a bush dog. Behold the bush dog. They've put a sign here saying zoo trail this way, which means I'm compelled to want to go that way. So it says go that, that way. And just because it's pointing that way, I, I feel the need to go this way. Okay, not sure what's in there. Oh, a little monkey. Bash the microphone on the glass there. Yep. 
What I might do, I might actually deactivate my microphone and just use the camera's microphones because I'm using it to get a nice crisp, crisp clear sound, but it's all in mono. Whereas at the moment I've got sounds coming from all directions. So what I might do is switch over to my camera microphones and then you should hear it in stereo. All right, so you should get a better sense of uh, stereo now. You hear the sounds coming from different directions. It's not that breezy, so I should be all right using this microphone. Okay, we're looking at these bush dogs again. We're at a different um, angle now. So it looks like they just run round and round and round in circles. It's a sand cat. Hello, sand cat. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to come up and say hello to me. It's like a regular cat. And here we have a, I don't know how to pronounce that, bin torug, bin torug, I've don't, no idea. Anyway, there it is. Flamingos. Flamingos at Bird World and Farnham are better. Because they've got a much more open space. I'm trying to think if I made a video at Bird World. And I've been there like... Did I make a video at Bird World? If I made a video at Bird World, I'm going to um, put it in the top corner. And I've been there like three times, or was it four times? Exhibit number 41. The Tapia. Camera's focusing on the fence. So here is the great great owl. It's in there somewhere, I guess. Right, here's a map. You are here, very helpfully saying that I'm by 27, which is here on the map. So this is where I just was looking at the tapirs. Birds. Are these herons? Oh, stalks. These are stalks. Hello, stalks. I'd much prefer to see all these animals in like, their natural habitats, but, you know, it's difficult for me to see a wolf in its natural habitat. Okay, there was a wolf literally right there just now looking at me, pointing the camera at it, and it buggers off. But it's gone through that little tunnel there, which comes out on this side. So... There they are. It's going to go under the tunnel, I think. There it is. It's got a half decent walking area. I could manually focus the camera so it doesn't keep focusing on the fences but it's not the most easy thing on this camera to do. So uh, I'll just let it auto-focus and put up with it. Warning, electric fence. So these, these are a red breasted goose and a glossy ibis. There's some capybara. See, that, this, this has got a nice wide hole in the fence, so I can actually stick the camera for it and zoom in. Hello. Do you want to escape? Do you want to be free? Sorry, can't help you. This is a Red River Hog.
Look what big ears. Here's another one. Oh, this is quite good. They've got hand washing facilities just randomly here. Wash hands after contact with animals, although I've not actually had any contact with animals because I've not seen how that's possible because they're all behind fences and glass. But it's here. Red wallabies. Or red neck wallabies. So there's two real wallabies here and then a bunch of fake ones. But here are the real ones. Last time I saw a cheetah in the zoo, I don't think I was filming it, I can't for life remember which zoo it was, and the cheetah just looks so unimpressed by everything. The cheetah feed and talk will be held here at 1.30. I think I've missed out time, is it? I think I must have been eating my burger then. Yeah, it's 2 o'clock now. So I was probably in the cafeteria having my disappointing cheeseburger. The bun was cold. I mean, it felt like it had just come out of fridge cold. And the meat uh, was ridiculously thin. And what is my hair doing? Oh, my God. Right, so I've just um, put some water through my hair from the hand washing station because it, I didn't know what it was doing, it was being un out of control. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, last time I saw Jeeta, it wasn't impressed. Well, uh, this is a cleaning cupboard. I'm looking in a cleaning cupboard. There's no cheetahs there. I mean, this is where they have talks, so there must be cheetahs. Remember, it just looks at me as if like, oh god, not another human watching me. Cheetahs. Ah, okay, right, nature trail. Enter a unique environment of Exmoor. Okay, so there should be a waterfall, I can hear a waterfall and some flowers, so those is wrong time of year for flowers and random stickers, let's, let's go <clears throat> they clearly don't want you taking uh, push chairs, buggies and that sort of thing through here and these steps also you just never get a wheeled thing over this so if you're in a wheelchair, tough, you can't do the nature trail so I shall film it for you in all its glory of spring although it's very early spring so there's nothing flowering yet it's waterfall down there there's a stream here as well going down to the river it's muddy so if you're you know in a chair, yeah, that's what you're missing. You're missing the mud. Fungus. It's totally the wrong time of year to see fungus. So, um, yeah, we're just looking at some grass. This is actually quite steep. I can see why they put um, a block on, like, chairs and buggies and stuff at the top, because you know people would try to get through here, get to about this point and be like, oh no, and then, and then, I, I, I know some people would be stupid enough to actually try and get something down here, it's quite steep, it's not going to work. Oh, that one, that's a big step. <clears throat> the steps are all uneven, like some of them are quite big drops and then others are little drops, no consistency. So that, I, probably that is not the zoo, that just looks like a field. That's, that's, that's somebody else's land over there. But, got the river. <laughs> ah! 
actually reminds me a little bit of the woods where I used to live. I don't know, I just get that vibe about it. It feels like I'm, I'm, I'm back, back in my old home, back in Surrey. I just get that feel about it. Particularly of these. These would grow everywhere. I haven't really seen many of them since moving this way. So this is what you can see. You can see uh, amphibians. I really am trying to act excited, but I can only get as excited as the stimulus I'm getting from the environment. So as you can see, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love wildlife. I mean, if this place was nearer to where I lived and it wasn't like in a zoo, it's just like, just public path somewhere, I'd probably come here all the time. Because it would be free and open. But, um, to pay to come into here, <sighs> not overly exciting. This is, where's that water? There was a photograph of a big waterfall when I entered this area. Where's the damn waterfall? Is this the, is this the one, the picture? I mean, that's tiny, but I suppose if you get the camera at the right angle, you could make it look much bigger. That's probably what they've done. And then, uh, and then the path goes up. And we see these animals. Where are they? There's one. Goldfinch. You can see those anywhere. Lesser woods, spotted woodpecker, you can see those at home. Robin, you can see those anywhere. Tawny owl, I hear those every night. Nut hatch, you see those at home. Peregrine falcon, um, I'm not sure if I see those at home. There's definitely some birds of prey, but I'm not, not sure what they are. Round grey wagtail. These are all birds I can see at home. Observation tower. That's good, I can see the cheetahs now, without the glass or the uh, wire getting in the way. And here is the cheetah, just chilling. And next to it is another cheetah, which you can't really see from this angle. But it's there. The Mara, guinea pig like rodent. Looks like another observation tower to look over this bit. This is like the largest enclosure I think I've seen here. Well, as an observation tower, it's not brilliant because I've Got to throw through the glass, which isn't ideal. Here it is. So instead of filming through the glass, it'd be far better to just come out here. Lean over, zoom in. There you go, I can see it un uninterrupted now. So can, they've got all these scheduled talks throughout the day. But for who? There's, there's no one here. I don't know, I mean there were a couple of people I saw in the restaurant and I did see one family wandering around. I don't know where they've gone. I guess a lot of the talks aren't actually happening. It'd be like really sucky, you get all prepared to do a talk. You go along and then there's like no one there. I suppose you just give up and go. There's no point talking to no one. I suppose you could have an audience of one. All right, this is the Exmoor Beast. This is their big selling point. That's over here at 13. Right, where am I? I'm here at like between 29 and 30B. 
which is here. So I want to go, which way do I want to go? I've made it to number 13, which is that, which is the Exmoor Beast. And there it is. I can point the camera at it. Okay. It's like, that's all you're getting, it's saying, I'll let you look at me for one second. You had all that time to get the camera on me. The Exmoor is massive. This would be much happier living out in Exmoor, killing sheep and ponies and cows and stuff. Now this glass isn't so frosted. This one's a lot cleaner. I can't see it. I have to wait for it to come back around. So that's their main selling point, is the Exmoor Beast. Oh, is this an observation tower? There we go. I might be able to see something a bit better from up here. So this is um, where the Exmoor Beast gets its story from. It's, it's buggered off. I've been standing up for it here for a while it walked past but I didn't have the camera ready and, and now it's, it's gone. I'm just visualising like, it's, like so it's a busy Saturday in August. You've got a small child comes up here. He's only as high as this railing going, I can't see, I can't see. Oh, there we go. There's another observation deck over there. Okay, this is what's up the other one. There's actually two of them. I just saw two of them but I didn't have the camera ready. So they got together and I heard a, a rumble, a growl. There's that one. The other one's gone off that way. So not, every time I turn the camera off, I hear like a, a not like a roar, but just a or growl, just like uh, letting me know it's there. And then I turn the camera on and it shuts up. Film through glass, or stick the camera over the top of the fence and just, there we go. So there are lemurs in here. I can't really see them through the glass though. Go okay, picnic, right here. Bit random spot, it's under shelter. There's a bin to put your rubbish in. So if it rains, you can come in here. I'm sure this will look nice if it's actually flowering and doesn't look like a skeleton tree. And then you'll be surrounded by the lemurs so the family can eat while the kids desperately try to look through the glass to see if there's actually anything in here. I should have bought my polarizing filter to try and get rid of some of this reflection. Oh yeah, I've got a polarising filter so I could put my camera now. I've had it a while, but haven't really used it in any of my videos. It works quite well. Should have bought it. A lot of pacing. A few of the uh, cats have been pacing, like the, uh, the Beast of Exmoor was pacing a bit. These ones are pacing a bit. And those are, uh, yeah, I think I've been here, I think I'm right near the entrance again. Not many people know this, but lemurs are actually primates, like we are. But they branched away from the apes a long, long time ago. So again, I've got this reflection on the glass. 
If I had my polarised filter, that, I would, that wouldn't be as bad. Ah, I'm full. The next time I do a Z video, I'll bring my polarised filter so I can cut down some of the glass reflection because it does work for that quite well. What's this? That's just like really random. Okay. Peacocks. They're both peacocks and not peahens. So I've got the big tails. There's a giant frog here. Now if this was a real frog, that would be terrifying. But it's not a real frog. Okay, that's a bit like Monkey World, where they got the uh, the bits that go across the path from one enclosure to another. I put a link to my All Alone at Monkey World video in the top corner. I've got a baby. Okay, that's all the cuteness you're getting. I'm moving on. Encounter zone, snack shack, playfield, covered picnic area. That's that way. Just in case your kids get bored of looking at enclosures where they can't see the animals or the animals aren't doing anything, there's a giant playground so they can have fun there. Reindeer. They're like way, way, way in the distance. They've got this fence and there's another fence between this fence and that fence. Encounter zone. This is a zoo animal encounter area. I just looked at the timetable. It looks like there was a talk 15 minutes ago. Well. I don't know, because it says on here, 2.30, does it? Hang on, I've lost it. Encounter zone 2.30, it's now 2.45. So I'm guessing if there were actually visitors in this park, the talk would still be on, because I can't imagine it would be over in 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, this is the encounter zone. There's something I haven't seen in ages. A human being. <laughs> oh <God>. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a nice little area. Picnic area. I'm going to explore the picnic area. I'm going to head home now. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>